Hello, welcome to Sigma Tech Learning Hall. I'll be your instructor for biology. For this class, we are going to be taking our exercises from the exam guide app. Now, if you don't already have this installed in your device, I would like you to download the app in order to follow along in this class. Now, exam guide is a leading educational app that helps students prepare adequately for various exams. Exams such as the UTME, the post-UTME, WIAC, GCE, IGMB, KCPE, JUPEB, Calbepedia. In the junior sections, we also have the BECE, we have the JSCE, and so much more. Now, you can download the app from www.examguide.com or you visit the Google Play Store to download. Now please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell to update yourselves on new videos that will be coming up. Now if you're ready for this class, let's get started. Today we're going to be looking at an exciting topic and it is titled Digestive System. Um, for the sake of um, the length of this particular topic, we will be breaking it down into several parts. We're going to be having um, part one, two, and as well as part three. Um, for now, we're going to be discussing part one, which has to do with the introduction and um, some other things that will be discussed in this particular topic. Um, first of all, we're going to be looking at some of the subtopics we are to um, actually look at. We have um, definition of some terms. We'll be looking at some terms um, used in um, digestion or digestive system and um, we're going to know what they are we are also going to be talking about alimentary canal of some organisms we're going to look at the alimentary canal of a planaria we are also going to be looking at the alimentary canal of a tapeworm we're also going to be discussing the alimentary canal of an earthworm we are also going to talk about alimentary canal of cockroach we're also going to be looking at that of the birds. And then also we are going to look at similarities and differences between the um, um, alimentary canal of a bird as well as that of a grasshopper or a cockroach. All right. So and also by the end of this particular class, you are expected to note some things and we call that our specific objective. There are some things you are supposed to have learned and be able to explain or tell us about. And um, one of them is that at the end of this class, you should be able to define the terms I told you about. The terms like digestion, you should be able to define ingestion, you should be able to define absorption, assimilation, and ejection, all right? And uh, also, you should be able to describe the elementary canal of a planaria of tapeworm, earthworm, cockroach, and that of a bird. And then after that, the next thing you should be able to tell us at the end of this lesson is that you should be able to explain or outline or mention some similarities and differences between alimentary canal of a bird and that of a grasshopper or a cockroach, okay? And um, so if you're ready for this, let's start off. We're looking at definition of terms. And I remember I told you that there are several terms we're gonna be looking at, and we should be able to define these terms. Now these terms include ingestion. We're also gonna be talking about digestion. We're gonna look at the definition of absorption. We're gonna be looking at the definition of assimilation. And then we're also gonna be talking about ingestion. Okay, now let's start with the first one, which is ingestion, I-N, ingestion. Now, ingestion is actually the process by which food substances are taken into the body, and it is usually through the mouth, okay, through the mouth of an animal or an organism. Now, as it relates to digestive system, we are uh, sort of like concentrating more on animals, all right? So it is the process, the process by which food substances are taken into the mouth or into the body through the mouth of an animal 
is what we define as um, ingestion. Okay. Next is digestion. Digestion. Digestion can simply be defined as the process by which food substances are broken down into simple absorbable forms. Into simple absorbable forms. So it is the breaking down of food substances. And most times how food is actually digested or broken down is by the involvement of enzymes. So you can also state that it is the process by which food substances are broken down by series of reactions involving enzymes into simple absorbable forms. Into simple absorbable forms. We also have another definition or another term which is called absorption. Absorption is the other term. Absorption. Now, after ingestion, the right sequence is after ingestion, the next thing that follows is digestion. After digestion, the next sequence or the next process that takes place in an animal is absorption. The food must be absorbed into the body or into the bloodstreams. Now, what is absorption? Absorption can simply be defined as the process by which digested food substances diffuse into the bloodstreams through what we call the villi in the small intestine. Or you, if you don't want to include through the villi in the small intestine because not all um, organisms have villi. So we can say uh, absorption is the process by which food substances diffuse into the bloodstreams. The process why they diffuse, where they diffuse into the bloodstreams. So that is what we call absorption. Next in the sequence, after absorption, the next thing that happens to the food is assimilation. Now, what is assimilation? Assimilation can be seen as a process by which digested food or digested food substances are being used up by the cells to carry out metabolic activities. They are being used up by the cells. So when the food is ingested, it now undergoes the process of digestion where it is broken down into simple absorbable forms and then it diffuses into the blood where the blood carries these digested food substances to areas where they are needed. And that is mainly the cells and the tissues. So the cells and the tissue making use of this digested food is what we call assimilation. You can call it the distribution and use of digested food products, okay, as an energy source. Because most of these digest, if the digested food products, they, they, they can be used to produce energy. They can be used to repair worn out tissues of the cells. They can also be used for growth and building up of the body. And so many other things that they can also be used to repair, like I said, worn out tissues of the body. This is what we call assimilation, assimilation. Now, after assimilation, the next thing that happens is ejection, E-G-E, -E, ejection. Now, ejection is actually the process by which undigested food substances are removed or passed from the body. They are removed from the body. So we have ingestion, digestion, absorption, assimilation, as well as ejection. So this is the process, or in fact, I can call this digestive system, okay? This is the process how food is being used or the process it takes, okay? Now, like we said, ingestion is the removal of undigested food substances, removal of undigested food substances. Now there is always, there is this mistake some persons make or people make um, that I want to really actually correct. Now, ingestion is not the same thing as excretion. The passing out of 
undigested food is not referred to as excretion. There is a difference between ejection and excretion. Now, ejection is the discharge or the removal of undigested food materials from a cell, okay? If it is in terms of a unicellular organism, you can say from a cell. But if it is in terms of multicellular organism, you can say from the digestive tracts, okay? But excretion is not the removal of undigested food materials. It is rather the removal of waste products of metabolism, or you can call them metabolic waste products, which include the examples of carbon dioxide, it includes urea, it includes excess water, mineral salts, excess mineral salts, and so many other ammonia, and so many other um, um, metabolic waste products. So please take note of the difference between the two. So removal or defecating is not excretion. Defecation is not excretion. It is actually a process of what? Ejection. It is ejection. All right. Now, having cleared our mind on that, let's talk about what is alimentary canal. So many persons have heard the word alimentary canal, alimentary canal. What is alimentary canal? Now, alimentary canal or alimentary tract is, are those parts in an animal or in an organism that aids digestion of food substances. Any part that is involved in the digestion of food substances in the body is referred to as part of the alimentary canal, or you can call them the alimentary canal. Now, in several um, um, animals, mostly in several organisms, we have different types of um, alimentary canal. You see some of them having um, a, a particular type of alimentary canal and in some other organisms it is missing, while in some it is also present. So generally we have so many um, organs responsible for um, digestion to take place in, a, in an organism. Now there are, let me list some of the few alimentary canal you can see common in most organisms. We have the mouth. Of course, we said that for food to get into the body, ingestion has to take place. And ingestion is through the mouth. So the mouth serves as one of the medium through which um, digestion is being aided or digestion can occur. So one is the mouth. We also have the pharynx. The pharynx, we're going to be looking at the pharynx in several organisms and what the role they play. We also have the gullet or the oesophagus. Now, the gullet or the oesophagus, we're also going to see it, is also part of the alimentary canal. We have the stomach, which is also part of the alimentary canal. We have duodenum, the duodenum. You know, the, the small intestine is actually divided into three main parts. We have the upper part, which is called the uh, duodenum. We have the middle part, which is called the jejunum. Okay? Then, and we have the ileum, where uh, uh, digestion is actually completed and absorption takes place. But for now, note that the duodenum is also part of the alimentary canal. We also have the small intestine. The small intestine. Now, why we are calling it the small intestine? It is actually referring to the ileum, to the ileum. And then we also have the large intestine. We have the cecum. We have the rectum. <coughs> excuse me. And then we have the anus. These are areas or parts of the alimentary canal. Now, take a look at it. As you can see in the diagram, we also have the appendix. The appendix is also part of the alimentary canal, but in some organisms, it is not functional. In some organisms, it is not functional. So you can see the alimentary canal of a man. You see the mouth, you see the tongue is found there, and then from the mouth, you get to the oesophagus. From the oesophagus, you go to the stomach. From the stomach, you enter the duodenum where you have the pancreas and the livers acting. And then we also have the small intestine, the cecum, and then large intestine, which is the column, and then the food is removed from the body through the anus. We're going to be looking at that in subsequent classes. But let's look at um, uh, uh, the alimentary canal of a simple uh, free-living organism. 
and that is planaria. Planaria. That is the structure of a planaria. Now, a planaria is actually a free living platyhelminth, or you can call it a flatworm. Flatworms are also known as platyhelminths, they are worms. But planaria is a free living. Now, planaria feeds on small aquatic animals called zooplanktons. They feed on small aquatic animals called zooplanktons. Now, digestion in planaria is intracellular. Digestion in planaria is intracellular. Now, let's take a look at some of the alimentary canal of the planaria. What makes up the alimentary canal of a planaria? Now, the planaria has a simple alimentary canal that consists of just one opening. One opening, the mouth. So, it means that it, food enters through the mouth and also comes out through the mouth. Okay, so it has just one opening, which is the mouth. So like I said before, food enters the planaria through the mouth. Now, after it enters the mouth, it then passes into the pharynx. Now, I told you I'm going to tell you the function of the pharynx. The pharynx here in planaria helps to suck in pieces of the food into the small intestine. Helps to suck in uh, um, little pieces of the food or suck in pieces of the food into the small intestine. And then the next alimentary canal is the food passes from the pharynx and then enter into the small intestine. Now in the small intestine, the small intestine has about three branches which enables digested food to diffuse to all parts of the body. It enables digested food to part, uh, diffuse to all parts of the body. Then undigested food is then removed from the body of the planaria through the mouth, through the mouth. So the plan, uh, planaria has about just three or four alimentary canals. We have the mouth, we have the small intestine, sorry, we have the mouth, we have the pharynx, and then we have the small intestine. So this is the structure of what um, the planaria looks like, okay? The alimentary canal of a planaria, you can notice the, you can see the um, pharynx, you can also see the intestine, which is the small intestine, and also you can see where the mouth is located, all right? Now, next is tapeworm, tapeworm. Now, let's look at the uh, 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 alimentary canal of a tapeworm, but a tapeworm is also a platyhelminth, but not just a free-living platyhelminth. Tapeworm is a parasitic platyhelminth. They are found in the intestine of some mammals as an endoparasite. So tapeworm is an endoparasite. Now looking at the alimentary canal of a tapeworm, tapeworm does not have alimentary canal. Tapeworm is actually one of the uh, um, organisms or animals without an alimentary canal. Now, why will a tapeworm not have alimentary canal? The reason is simple, because it feeds on already digested food of the host. Remember we said it is located, mostly found in the intestine or small intestine of the host. So they feed on already digested food. Remember the small intestine is where food is digested or digestion of food is completed, okay? So what the tapeworm does is just to absorb, to wallow in that particular uh, food and then absorb it, and that's all. So it does the absorption. A tapeworm does not undergo, um, does not undergo digestion process. It also doesn't undergo ingestion process. It begins its own from absorption, assimilation, and so on. Okay, so that is for tapeworm. And then we look at the um, um, earthworm. Earthworm is a free living annelid. Okay, annelids are segmented worms. Now, tapeworm is free living, it's non parasitic. They feed on dry vegetables found in the soil. They feed on dry vegetables found in the soil. Now, what is the alimentary canal of an earthworm? Alimentary canal. Now, the, the, the earthworm has a mouth, it has a pharynx, it has oesophagus, it also has a crop, it also has gizzard, 
small intestine, it has a cecum, it has a rectum, and it also has an anus. So that is the, the um, alimentary canal of a, an earthworm. Now, what, what happens in the mouth? All right? Now, in the mouth of an earthworm, that is where food is being ingested. So food is ingested through the mouth. Next is the pharynx. Here, the pharynx plays the role of secreting mucus, which helps to lubricate the food before entering into the body. Then we have the uh, oesophagus. One of the major functions of the oesophagus in, the, in an earthworm is that it serves as a passage for the food. So the, the food passes into the crop through the oesophagus. And then the crop is where the food is stored temporarily. Food is stored in the crop temporarily. And then it enters into the gizzard. Now the gizzard is where the food is being grinded or broken up, okay? It, it breaks it up and grinds it. And then after grinding the food, the food is then passed into the small intestine. The small intestine is where digestion of food is completed and absorption takes place. And after the food is digestion and absorption takes place, undigested foods are then removed from the body through the cecum, through the uh, rectum, and then finally out of the body through the anus. So these are the uh, uh, um, um, process or the feeding process in an earthworm. So remember, an earthworm has a mouth in the elementary canal. There is a mouth, it has pharynx, it has oesophagus, it has crop, it has gizzards, small intestine, it has a cecum, rectum, as well as an anus. So that is the um, alimentary canal of an earthworm. Next is cockroach. Cockroach. Now, cockroach is an arthropod, okay? Is an arthropod that belongs to the class Insecta. It is an insect. Now, cockroaches feed on household materials like books, sugar, and other foods. Now, both grasshopper and cockroach, they have the same alimentary canal, not only just the same alimentary canal, they have the same um, um, feeding habit and um, um, modification, mostly in the mouth. Feeding habit and modification, they have the same. And they also have the same alimentary canal with that of a cockroach, cockroach and the grasshopper. Let's look at the alimentary canal of a cockroach. Now, the alimentary canal of a cockroach consists of mouth, and the mouth is the site for ingestion of food. That's where food is ingested into the body of the cockroach. Now, the mouth is modified with a type of mouth path that consists of mandibles and maxillae. Now, the functions of these mandibles and maxillae is for cutting and chewing of food cutting and chewing of food. Now, after the mandibles and the maxillae has finished cutting and chewing the food, the, the food is being acted upon by the salivary gland. Now, the salivary gland secretes an enzyme for digestion of food. So when this enzyme is being released on the food, digestion starts taking place. Then the food passes into um, the crop passes to the crop through the oesophagus of the cockroach or grasshopper, passes into the crop, now through the oesophagus. Now the crop is where food is stored temporarily. From the crop, the food enters into the gizzard uh, compartment. Now the gizzard is where the food is being grinded into smaller particles. And from the gizzard, it then moves into the meat gut. Now, the meat gut is where digestion is completed and absorption begins to take place. Now, from the meat gut, the undigested food enters into the hind gut. Now, the hind gut is where water and mineral salt are absorbed from the undigested food. Now, this undigested food from the hind gut is now removed out of the body through the anus. 
One more time, let's look at it again. It comes from the mouth. From the mouth, it then moves to the salivary gland. From the salivary gland, it passes through the oesophagus and enters into the crop. And from the crop to the gizzard, from the gizzard to the midgut, and from the midgut to the hindgut, and then it passes out of the body, undigested food, through the anus. Next on the line is birds. I think this is the last one, alimentary canal of the bird. Now, a bird is a vertebrate, okay? A vertebrate, or you can call it a caudata in terms of the phylum. And it belongs to the class we call apes. Now, birds feed on fruits, on grains, which are seeds, and also on flesh. But we have the alimentary canal of a bird. Now, the alimentary canal of a bird consists of mouth, which contains a beak. Now, the mouth and the beak um, 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 functions or carries out the function of picking and ingesting of food. The pick through the, using the beak and ingestion takes place through the mouth. And then the food now passes from the uh, mouth through the esophagus into the crop into the crop. Now, the crop, like we all know, is the place where food is being stored temporarily. From the crop, it enters what we call the proventriculus. Another name for proventriculus is the glandular stomach. The reason why it is called a glandular stomach is because digestive enzymes are secreted from the proventriculus. So the proventriculus secretes digestive enzymes which starts acting on the food. Now from the proventriculus, the food gets into the gizzard. The gizzard is called a grindular stomach. The reason why it is called a grindular stomach is because that is where food particles or the food is grinded into smaller particles. And then from the gizzard, it enters into the intestine. The intestine is where digestion is completed and absorption of food also takes place in the intestine. Now, undigested foods pass through the cecum, enters from the cecum, it passes to the rectum, and then from the rectum, it is removed from the body of the bird through the anus, or you can call that the cloaca. Okay, so these are the alimentary canals of a bird. Now, before we go, let's take a look at similarities. Similarities between the alimentary canal of a cockroach and that of a bird. Now, if you had gone through these things with me, the alimentary canal, you will understand that both of them have narrow oesophagus. They have oesophagus. Then also, they both have crops where food is stored temporarily. They both have crops. And then number three, they both have muscular gizzards. Remember we said there is a gizzard in, in cockroach and also there is a gizzard in the bird. And the function of the gizzard is for grinding food particles into smaller particles. And then they both have cecum. They both have a cecum. And also they both have anus, but in terms of a, um, um, that of the bird, it is called a cloaca. All right. Now let's take a look at also few differences before we go. Few differences between um, a bird, the alimentary canal of a bird, and that of a cockroach. Now in a bird, there is a presence of tongue. A bird has a tongue beneath, inside the mouth. Though there is presence of tongue, but in a cockroach, there is an absence of tongue. Then number two, in birds, the mouth is modified with beaks. The mouth is modified with beak, and then in terms of cockroach, the mouth is modified into mandibles and maxillae, which I told you it is for cutting and chewing. And then also, number three, there is a presence of pancreas. If you look at the um, alimentary canal of a bird, there is a presence of pancreas, but there is absence of pancreas in a cockroach. Also, in a bird, there is a presence of geodenum. There's a presence of geodenum. All these are found in the small intestine. There is a presence of geodenum, but in a cockroach, there is an absence of geodenum. So this is where we call it a wrap-up on this particular um, topic called 
digestive system. Thank you for participating in today's class. You can practice more questions using your exam guide app. The app scores and gives a detailed explanation of all the questions at the end of your practice test. You can also learn particular topics of interest with different modes like study mode, uh, mock mode, and even practice mode. It, is also, it also has other features that makes learning very fun. Now, it is a must for all serious students. Download from www.examguide.com if you don't have it yet. See you in the next class. Don't forget to subscribe to our channels, hit the notifi notification bell, and share the videos to your loved ones and friends that will benefit from it. Bye for now.